The blades cross your nightgown As the phones ring I think last night You were driving circles around Anything's better than the recycled sloppy Joes that were served week after week. That a giant pot of it. And if you didn't finish, if, if the crowd didn't finish the sloppy Joes at one week's hall, Bill would be there two weeks later at the next hall project. And I'm not even kidding you. After that, they turned it into taco salad, what was left of it. Mix it in. That was taco meat. <laughs> oh, God, help me. What is wrong with these people? Jehovah, what is wrong with your people? Um, a, very, a very precarious situation I remember I'd got myself into was uh, Saturday morning field service. I was working with another brother, and we were about to leave the parking lot when uh, a woman named Rowena... Uh, very sweet lady, Rowena Hart, hi Rowena, came and knocked on the door of my car as we were pulling out, I rolled down the window, and she said, I made a snack for you brothers to take with you since you're going out in the rural territories, this will help you to get through the morning, I hope you enjoy it, and she hands us these two bags, these are Ziploc bags, filled with cornbread broken up pieces of cornbread it looked awful and i said thank you and we went out in field service and at some point during the morning i do recall that i lifted up the ziploc bag i said oh this is a shame but i opened it up and i looked at the cornbread but i just couldn't i mean i know she spent the time to make it but i just couldn't even take it by it was awful and we discarded it by the side of the road. And at the next meeting, Rowena came up to me and asked, How did you enjoy how did your brothers enjoy the cookies? And I said, What well, cookies? See, I had forgotten about the cornbread thing. But it turns out it wasn't even cornbread. It was cookies made with Splenda. I don't know. But cheering field service experiences. One that I recall was a man named Brother Edels, and he was recounting a beautiful story for the rest of us. Uh, he and his pioneer wife are out in service, they ring the doorbell, and lo and behold, a man answers the door completely naked, stark naked, not a strip of clothing on, and uh, these, these are seasoned field service people, so they're not going to be shocked by any of the, uh, antics of the householders. Those householders and their shenanigans. They've seen it all, so the Brother Edel, he didn't skip a beat, and he goes into his presentation with this man who's standing there completely naked. And, uh, he's gonna give him the full two-minute presentation no matter what. He's... Has his has the determination of a true pioneer of Jehovah, and uh, whilst in the process of of this uh, magazine presentation, the man begins playing with himself. He is looking at Sister Edels with a big smile on his face, and he's yanking off. And this doesn't shock Brother Edels, though. He's prepared for all things out in service, so he continues with his presentation, and he makes it all the way to the end, and he hands the magazines to the naked man, and the man accepts them with one hand. Man, completely naked, broad daylight, jacking off, two feet away from your wife, he's staring at her, in front of you. You may have lost the plot at some point, Brother Edels. I have a concern.
for the people at the Kingdom Hall. Sometimes I fear that they really don't understand what's going on. They've lost the ball. They don't know where the ball is. They're walking around out in the field looking for the baseball that's out in the parking lot somewhere. I know some of you think I make stories up, but this really happened. There's many witnesses to this event and is a much talked about occurrence of the 2007 Summer District Convention. I was seated midway up of the um, second section with my sister and two of her friends, and two of my friends, and we were, it was the afternoon part of the session, and below us, on the front row of the top section, was a family called the Stovers. They're Wichita royalty, in fact, and they are celebrity witnesses. They have, uh, everything goes right for them, and they have, uh, they're born into money. My understanding is that they are heirs of the Russell Stover candy fortune, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, there's a big family, a shitload of them, and they're better than everyone else. Everyone kisses their asses and grovels to them. And their dad's an elder, everyone's an elder. The kids are elders. The kids are like 28 and they're elders. Ah, what a world. Anyways, these, um, about eight of these bastards are sitting in the front row of the top section. I am several rows up, about eight or nine rows up. And to the right side, <coughs> pardon me, friends, to the right side of them in, in the corner next to a uh, entrance where the, where the staircase is, you know, they have the entrance and exit. There's two, two seats that are right there by the corner and it's directly on the other side of the steps from the Stover family that are sitting there. And, uh, uh, Apparently, there's this fat guy. His name's Jeremy Gamble. And he's a big, fat guy. He's like 320 pounds. He's huge. He's like a John Candy-sized guy. And he uh, is takes a seat there. He's sitting by himself. And he has, uh, the big, he has a big lunch carton with him. He has one of those big igloo-sized cartons. It's full of food. He's a typical fat guy. Your basic fat man. Imagine Peter Griffin came to life. There you have him. And he is, during the session, he is using his, uh, he has a Samsonite briefcase. He's using it for a desk, as fat guys often do. Setting his Bible paper notepad on his briefcase. And it seems that he has some sort of food item sitting there, too. I don't know. It's going on. Seems he had some little uh, carrying case that he had some sort of snacks he was giving to himself, but uh, all of a sudden the chair explodes. No, 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 no. The chair. The chair didn't break, friends. The chair exploded. I mean, it gave way. I mean, the the, the nuts, the bolts, they went flying. This chair that this fat guy was sitting in explodes. And he hits the floor like a bag of wet shit. I mean, it was loud. It was startling. There was gasps that were audible from the audience. And everyone looked over. Here's what didn't happen immediately following that. Anything. Nothing. This big fat guy, he's laying, his papers are everywhere, his books, his, his, his igloo thing tipped over. His, this guy's a mess and he's laying on the floor like a hippo that got kicked out of the back of a truck. And... The Stover family, they're sitting front and center. They're literally two feet away from this guy. They look over at him, and they don't help him. Nobody stands up. 
Nobody goes to see if they can aid him in any way. I guess everyone was waiting for someone else to do it because everyone was staring intently at him for several seconds. I guess everyone was hoping that someone else was about to do something, but nobody did. And Jeremy Gamble said, Oh, uh, uh, and he sits up, he looks around, and look, I'm like nine rows up in the middle of my seating section. And I'm sitting there in disbelief. I'm looking over at the other people in my row. They're in disbelief too. None of the people in his direct vicinity are coming to his aid. Especially these sons of bastards sitting in the front row. They're, they look over at him for five, ten seconds. Then they go, their gaze returns to the stage of the district convention. And they continue listening. By the way, the talk and everything else uh, went uh, ahead, of, ahead as scheduled. And the worst part of this, and I will name names... A young attendant named Kendall Koss, who was standing in the walkway, standing by the, uh, the rail that separates the top section from the middle section, was standing there looking at the whole things, and I am not shitting you, friends. He slowly started taking steps backwards, and he walked back the opposite direction, and he walked, he literally walked backwards slowly until he stood around the corner from the, the entrance and exit to where he was out of eye, eye line. An attendant. Attendant at the district convention. And I would guesstimate about 80, 90 seconds later, another attendant named Dusty Bivens circled for he was out in the hallway he was in the outside corridor where the bathrooms are he hears something about a minute and a half later he rounds the corner and he sees a big fat guy on his hands and knees trying to pick up papers that have gone everywhere his books there's a chair in ruins a chair that has exploded he looks around he's astonished he doesn't know what's happened and what he can't believe. I'm watching this expression on his face. I'm, I'm looking at them like it's all some sort of sick TV show playing out. A German TV. This is like German television. This is what people watch in Germany. It's like a snuff film. This is what German people masturbate to. And Bivens, he comes there. He, he grabs... The, the heavy set man and helps him to his feet and helps him pick up his books. And he, set, he sets him down at the other seat. Then he picks up the pieces of the chair. And I'll never forget the look on his face. When he swung back around and looked up at the audience that were all sitting in the top row. And it only lasted a second. But I won't forget that look on his face. Where were you? What is going on here? Where's Jehovah's Witness? You were driving circles around me. I think last night you were driving circles around me. I think last night you were driving circles around me. Anything's better than the recycled sloppy Joes that were served week after week. That a giant pot of it. The blade cross your Oh, God, help me. What is wrong with these people? Jehovah, what is wrong with your people? Um, a very a very precarious situation, I remember. 
I'd got myself into was uh, Saturday morning field service. I was working with another brother, and we were about to leave the parking lot when uh, a woman named Rowena, uh, very sweet lady, Rowena Hart, hi Rowena, came and knocked on the door. And if you didn't finish, if, if the crowd didn't finish the Sloppy Joes, at one week's hall, Bill did be there two weeks later at the next hall project. And I'm not even kidding you. After that, they turned it into taco salad, what was left of it. Mix it in. It was taco meat. 